After showing off her chubby pet, her name is Marta Julia, same as me. Donna Marta goes to her room that looks more like a cave teeming with treasures or a local history museum. Here you could find everything from stuffed animals and portraits of heroes to dolls and saint figurines. The woman has been living here ever since she left her husband. Incidentally, the husband lives in the same house, upstairs. Donna Marta is mocking him. He lives upstairs with his girl. She is 24. I am 65 already. I say let him have his fun while he can. It's time for Donna Marta to change and add some indispensable ritual amulets to her costume. She's ready to start the ceremony. Carlos Aguilar. This holy morning, we are asking our spiritual brothers to rid you of all evil. Donna Marta's ceremony is a whimsical mix of a Catholic mess, appeals to Mayan gods, and African rituals. Her altar compromises of all the best as well. Buddha statues, a North American Indian image, and various figurines, amply decorated with beaded necklaces. The witch gets into a state that makes her capable of talking to the higher powers. She creates a magical ring of smoke that conducts energy between the boy and gods. There's no need for words now, and it looks like Carlos starts seeing something in the spurts of flame. He looks terrified and literally gets chills. Quickly, bring me the red prayer beads. He's afraid. He's cold as ice. Don't look away or it won't work. Donna Marta is waiting for spiritual brothers to reply. But the higher powers are not in a hurry to respond. The witch is coaxing the fire. Father, give us a sign. We need a sign. Thank you. Thank you. Please make Carlo Agliar free of all evil. Oh, you start warming up already. Don't turn away your eyes. Everything bad is going to stop now. You can do it, Carlos. You can do everything with your life. The only thing left is to wait until the fire devours everything in it. All candle holders have to break, all candles to burn down. Considering that the higher powers came to a favorable decision, it takes a lot of time for the fire to die out. Something or someone is messing with Carlo's request and is not letting go of the boy. Go away, the evil spirit that calls for death. Go wherever you want. Leave the boy alone. He's only 11. He can take a good path. Leave the world of people altogether. People are supposed to live. Spiritual brothers make the good spirit of Carlos stronger. I see how weak he is. He's so weak. Help the boy drive the evil spirit away. His Nagwal is bad, but Nagwals can be changed. The evil spirit, the bad Nagwal, has a tight grip on the child. Even the family of Donna Marta, used to everything, watches the unabated fire in silent awe. The witch starts helping the fire to prevail over the things that embody the presence of evil. Donna Marta decided to act through the child himself. Carlos is almost paralyzed with fear when the last candle holder finally breaks and the bad Nagwil gives in. She talked to me and drove the evil spirit away. She says, I have to move on. The witch herself has also had a rough time. Later, she would almost faint and discover that her blood sugar level went through the roof. 
Nevertheless, after recovering, she goes into explaining her practices. I drove away the evil spirit of Carlos Aguilar. That's what we needed the fire for. And it was a shabby fire. If it was bigger, the process would have been faster. But the boy's an orphan. Where would he get money? So I decided to help him just like that for free. Usually these fires are expensive. Two or three thousand quetzal. Three thousand quetzal is about 165 euros. A huge chunk of the price goes to cover consumables. Candles, candle holders, cigars, ritual alcohol, rum and whiskey, flower essences. Everything for a stable connection with spirits. Considering the poverty of the majority of Guatemalans, whose monthly salary can be as small as one-tenth of this price, no wonder Donna Marta is somewhat proud of her gift, although she's made plenty of those in her lifetime. I started treating others when I was eight. I started treating kids in my neighborhood from sniffles and upset stomach, from flu and evil spirits. Donna Marta never studied how to talk with spirits. What she calls a gift is something she was born with, a legacy from her mother, who was a healer. And the trial of power, traditional for the chosen ones, started for her at an early age. It was her mother who put the girl through a terrible ordeal. <laughs> My mom told me that, when I was very little, they left me in a rainforest as a test. And God wanted me to live. I was found 18 hours later. Naturally, I got sick. Later, I suffered through a lot, too. When I was about 14, I started having seizures that continued for another 12 years, until I fully devoted myself to this work. However astonishing this treatment of a child might seem to us, it's completely normal for people of power. Those who are destined to become one of them might discover supernatural abilities and a special connection to the other world, even in their infancy. Physical sufferings are also a direct indication that a person is meant to help others. It's been 40 years now since Dana Marta started to perform her cleansing ceremonies, talking to the spiritual brothers whose voices are familiar to her from the early age. She's well known in neighboring towns and recently she was even invited to another country, El Salvador. That's how far the fame of her powers have spread. The woman is eager to explain how Christian saints and amulets help her, but she starts feeling worse by the minute. Fixing Carlos's destiny has been really tough on her. She pays with her own health for the well-being of others.